welcome back <coughs> we'll start with this prayer o madhyana timirandhasya nyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prashtaya bhutale श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामीन नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे today's topic is glories of mahaprasad so i know some of you may be missing on the stories uh, in this week because we were discussing quite a lot of uh, content and some practical steps and whatever so uh, i didn't cover as many stories as i i was covering in the previous weeks so here you go you have stories today the past times understanding the importance of mahaprasad and what miracles it can do for all of us so the first past time that i have to share today <clears throat> is mahaprasad of jagannath lord jagannath so raise your hands if you have been to or visited jagannath puri okay so many of you wow that's amazing okay take your hand down i am going to ask another question <laughs> okay the second question i have is how many of you have been fortunate enough to uh, honor mahaprasad of jagannath Mm. Mm. Many of you. Yes, so oh, Priyavrat Prabhu is <laughs> from Puri. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you. So we have also been very fortunate to uh, honor the Mahaprasad. Fortunate to honor the Mahaprasad <clears throat> of uh, Lord Jagannath. So uh, not only we. had this prashad which is available in this ardhan pots it's a speciality uh, of jagannath puri that the prashadam is given in this ardhan pots <clears throat> but we were also fortunate to actually get the mahaprasad directly from the plate of the supreme lord so uh, when we were actually uh, taking darshan and uh, going around in the temple premises with this uh, panda is the pujari one of the pujari is there and this plate which was going from so when the offering is done they have this big big plates in which the offerings are done and this plate was taken from one place to another and then uh, the, uh, the prasadam was emptied somewhere and this empty plate was going back and this pujari stopped that person and said hey come here <laughs> and they were not al- uh, allowing him to take but these are uh, they have this wonderful past times of fighting with each other <laughs> and some of the other he grabbed some prasadam which were some remnants in that plate gathered that all the it was rice and it was lot of ghee and rice and he took that and uh, he gave little to arang manjit and gave little to me <clears throat> and that is how we directly uh, got the opportunity to honor the mahaprasad of lord jagannath <clears throat> so how how did this uh, so jagannath puri is famous for uh, this temple of jagannath puri is famous for mahaprasad and uh, there is a not only like a small shop where the mahaprasad is distributed there is a entire uh, bazaar it is called anand bazaar in which this mahaprasad is distributed so how did this happen and that past time i am going to explain to you now so this is a past time which uh, comes in chaitanya mangal which is written by shri lochandas thakur and lochandas thakur quotes padma puran uh, in his book to explain this past time so so the past time is quite long so i'm start starting somewhere in between where narad muni has heard 
this discussion between Uddhava and Lord Shri Krishna, where Uddhava is speaking to Lord Shri Krishna and saying that just by eating your remnants, O Lord Krishna, so your Mahaprasad I have eaten, and because of that potency of your remnants or your Mahaprasad, I have been able to overcome the influence of Maya. So after hearing this, Narad Muni, Narad Muni becomes very curious. And he thinks that although I have been actually serving the Supreme Lord for many, many years, I have been path of I have been on this path of dev devotion for a long, long time. And I have been constantly chanting the holy name. Still, I have no idea about the potency of Lord Krishna's Mahaprasad. I have never tested the Mahaprasad of the Supreme Lord. I must understand by accepting Mahaprasad, what is this, what uh, Uddhava is explaining. And it is so glorious that Uddhava is glorifying Mahaprasad in the presence of the Lord Shri Krishna. So I must somehow get this mercy. So thinking like that, Narada went to Vaikuntha planet. And he said that this is the only way I can get the Mahaprasad is by serving Mother Lakshmi. So he served Mother Lakshmi for 12 whole years, not for one day, two days. It says, the Chaitanya Mangal explains that Narad Muni served Mother Lakshmi for 12 years. So he had to wait for 12 years. Finally, he's going to get Mahaprasad. But he had to wait for 12 years to get Mahaprasad. So at the end of the 12 years, Mother Lakshmi was very, very pleased with Narada's service. And requested Narad Muni to ask any boon he wants. So Narad Muni replied, Oh my dear mother, first you must promise me that whatever I ask for, you will grant me. And Mother Lakshmi Devi said that, yes, I take a vow that gladly I will give you what you ask for. And then Narad Muni revealed. He said that, oh mother, please give me some Mahaprasad of Lord Vishnu. I haven't tasted this Mahaprasad. I have heard about it, but I have never tasted it. Please give me something. So then suddenly Lakshmi Devi's face changed and her mood changed. And she said, please ask me anything else, O Narad Muni, except for Lord's Prashad. She said, a few days ago, the Lord has specifically asked me to not give my Prashad to anyone, my remnants to anyone, his remnants to anyone. So you must understand that I am a chaste wife and I cannot disobey my husband. So, oh son, I cannot give you Mahaprasad. But Narad Muni said adamantly that I don't want anything else. If you want to give me something, then this is the only thing that I will take. You have promised me. You have taken a vow that you are going to give me this Mahaprasad. So you must grant me this boon and give me this at least little Mahaprasad that you must give me. So Lakshmi Devi was in trouble now. On one side, the husband has said that don't give the remnants and the son is saying that you must give me that, that remnant only. So she said that, okay, you wait for some time and I will look into this, how to give you some Mahaprasad and how to satisfy your desire. So at noon, when Lakshmi Devi was serving uh, Lord and Lord understood that though Lakshmi Devi is serving me, she is looking a bit unhappy and she is looking a bit morose. So the Lord very gently asked her the reason for her distress. So taking shelter of the Lord, then Mother Lakshmi explained to him that how she is uh, into this dilemma, what to do. And she said that I have to perform the duty and I have to understand that I cannot, you have given me this order, but at the same time, I have given the promise as well to Narad Muni that I will, I will give, him this, give him this boon. Now, please tell me, you only, you can help me in this, that how can I 
come out of it so then lord very mercifully um, helped lakshmi devi and he said just for today i will cancel this restriction from you and you can take my remnants and give it to narada but you deliver the prasad in such a way that i am not seeing it when i turn my face this side you take it as if i do not know so the goddess became very happy thinking that yes now i can fulfill the boon that i have given and then she does like that and takes the plate of the remnants and when the lord was not looking and he she immediately took it to narad muni and said that here is the mahaprasad plate and happily presented that to the uh, sage and narad muni was so joy joyful he took the first uh, morsel into his mouth and he started dancing in ecstasy and he eagerly then honored the prasad and he finished it everything and he relished it and as soon as he finished prasadam his ecstasy shot up and he started chanting he is always always chanting but he started more uh, vigorously chanting and more vigorously dancing in great bliss and his ecstatic emotions increased so much and he started running all over the universe like a madman going from one planet to another planet chanting dancing without stopping and finally while he was going from one planet to another he reached mount kailash and he did not even understand that he has reached the abode of lord shiva he was so much in ecstasy of his own so lord shiva was surprised to see narad muni chanting and dancing in such a state of ecstasy so narad muni of course did not notice that lord shiva was watching and he was just continuing like that so finally lord shiva had to pacify narad muni and said narada i know you are always in ecstasy because you are chanting the lord's name but today i can see that you are in a completely different condition what has happened to you so narad muni cools down and explains everything saying that do you know what happened today i got so much pleasure and ecstasy of honoring lord's mahaprasad and because of that i am into so much ecstasy and that is why i am dancing and chanting like this lord shiva then folded his palms and replied oh narada you are very fortunate i am sure you must have kept some mahaprasad for me <laughs> i am so dear to you and you are so dear to me and if you have come here chanting and dancing i am sure you must have brought something for me so please give it to me and narada felt very sorry because he was in ecstasy he ate everything and he did not bring any mahaprasad for lord shiva so putting his head down narad muni stood there with folded hand and before lord shiva and then he suddenly saw that one uh, grain was stuck in his on his hand and narada immediately say here you go i have got a morsel of prasad just for you so uh, when lord shiva took that one grain of mahaprasad and he put it into his mouth as soon as that grain touched his tongue mahadev became very ecstatic and very happy so much so that he couldn't remain quiet he started dancing and when he started dancing his ecstasy even grew because he started dancing da- dancing in uh, thinking of uh, lord's mahaprasad that he is he had just honored and his ecstasy intensified because of that and his dancing became so vigorous that suddenly he started doing tandava now tandava is the dance that he does when he has to annihilate the entire universe but he didn't even realize he is in ecstasy he is dancing his tandava dance and the whole universe started shaking everyone became frightened what happened this is not the time for annihilation why lord shiva is dancing like this and everyone the devatas went begging to mother parvati 
saying that do something we cannot go now he is doing tandava so only you can now save us so mother parvati uh, went there and somehow or the other she pacified lord shiva lord shiva was not happy that mother parvati brought out uh, him from the ecstasy that he was in but then she was very humbly submitting to him she was very humbly submitting to him so uh, he got pacified and finally she inquired my dear husband what happened to you what has caused you to dance in so much ecstasy i know you are vaishnava nam yatha shambhu you are one of the best you are the best of the vaishnavas and i have seen you always meditating on the lord but today i can see that you were in a completely different ecstasy what has happened tell me so lord shiva explained that he had received lord vishnu's mahaprasad from narad muni and mother parvati was very astonished and she said that my dear husband have you kept some mahaprasad for me and lord shiva could not answer he had just got one grain and he had already eaten it all how could he save something from one grain for her so just to answer something she say, he said that actually you are not eligible to receive lord uh, lord's mahaprasad and parvati became very very angry she said i am also vaishnavi how come you are saying that i am not eligible for mahaprasad and she was very very angry she said that i am deprived of lord's mahaprasad she was so furious that the fire started coming from her head now one problem stopped another problem started so lord shiva's tandava nritya was stopped but now mother parvati's anger was burning the entire universe so finally from the planets uh, all the devatas approached lord vishnu saying that now your devotee is angry please uh, pacify her otherwise she will burn down everything so lord vishnu came on his eagle on his garuda and uh, he pacified the parvati devi as soon as parvati devi saw that uh, he has uh, lord has appeared uh, she offered her obeisances and lord narayana said that yes you are my devotee you are the vaishnavi <clears throat> i will give you as much mahaprasad as you want so but please be pacified and give up your anger otherwise all your children will be finished so mother parvati then protested saying that i will not be satisfied if you give your mahaprasad only to me i request you to give my your mahaprasad to all of my children to all the living entities i do not want my children to suffer as i am suffering now because i did not get your mahaprasad so you must arrange that your mahaprasad be given to all the living entities so then lord uh, smiled and said the thast so be it and uh, he explained <coughs> that uh, in nilachal dham so in jagannath puri uh, he will appear as uh, jagannath and then his mahaprasad will be distributed profusely to everyone and he explained that my mahaprasad will first come to you so you will be present in the compound in the main compound or the courtyard of the temple as bimala so vimala devi's temple is there and after offering to me the prasad will come to you first to honor and only then it will be distributed to everyone so actually what we get is not only mahaprasad but it is maha mahaprasad so when lord takes it it becomes mahaprasad when he takes it and gives it to us it becomes mahaprasad but when a devotee accepts that mahaprasad and then that mahaprasad is uh, honored by him and the remnants are given to the other devotees that becomes maha mahaprasad it becomes even more glorious and we'll talk about that as well so lord shiva uh, and he explains that because lord shiva has said this to you that uh, and he hasn't shared any mahaprasad with you that is why his temple will be outside of the courtyard but your temple will be within the courtyard of 
puri jagannath so that is how uh, we see if in this past time that lord shiva mother parvati narad muni this great souls great wonderful uh, vaishnavas they are keen actually lord shiva is not ordinary soul uh, lord shiva is um, uh, expansion of the supreme lord himself uh, it is explained in brahma samhita that lord krishna is like milk and lord shiva is like yogurt so lord shiva like just like the curd comes from the milk but the milk cannot come from the yogurt so it is like that that the lord shiva is an expansion of the supreme lord which is in which is in contact with the material nature so that's a technical topic we'll cover that some other time but lord shiva himself is is keen to get the mahaprasad from uh, for from the supreme lord mother parvati is very keen narad muni is very keen so everyone is keen so shouldn't we also be, be very keen to receive this uh, benefit of eating the nectar how long we will still cook for ourselves and accumulate the reactions of our own karma how long we should wait to receive this mercy of the mahaprasad so my answer is not a single moment we should wait start from today cook for the lord offer it to him and then accept this nectar in mahaprasad now we have discussed the past time of lord's mahaprasad actually that was maha mahaprasad as well now let us look at uh, one more past time i know it is a little bit time it is 8:40 already but i'll briefly explain this other past time as well and then we will close so this is a story of shila prabhupad it is it has been explained by shruta kirti prabhu shruta kirti prabhu uh, was one of his uh, personal servants for many years and he traveled with shila prabhupad uh, uh, wherever shila prabhupad was traveling for preaching so he has written a very wonderful book called uh, what is the difficulty based on his very close association with shila prabhupad he has given various different past times but this particular past time that i am explaining is not from the book but he has been explained in um, uh, various lectures it is one of his favorite past times so he explains that he was traveling shrutakirti prabhu was traveling with shila prabhupad uh, from mexico city to going to venezuela uh, the city of caracas and prabhupad uh, because they are devotees uh, they had some packed prasadam with them and the prasadam that he was having was puffed rice and peanuts so uh, when prabhupad was hungry um, uh, shrutakirti prabhu as a servant gave him uh, the prasad that was packed to him and he ate for few minutes and then um, after he was done he just said okay and that means that he has been done so shrutakirti prabhu took that prasad and there were there was another uh, devotee traveling with him they shared they uh, divided that and half of that was given to this other prabhu param hamsa prabhu and the half of that shrutakirti prabhu kept for himself and before even he is he was going to eat there was this air hostess who was passing by in the aisle and suddenly she stopped right in front of shrutakirti prabhu and suddenly now this is very unusual but the air hostess grabbed a handful of that puff rice and threw it in her mouth and she says oh this is wonderful what is it and shrutakirti prabhu said it is puffed rice and he was dumbstruck that this has happened because this is shila prabhupada's mahaprasad it is remnant of shila prabhupada one of the purest devotees so why she she asked why are you eating this when the food will be offered by the airlines so he explained that we have our own diet and we are vegetarian so she said oh is there anything else that i can do for you i can bring for you so shrutakirti prabhu looked at shila prabhupad and shila prabhupad said hot milk and she said fine and then she said and she came back after 10 minutes and came back with three plates with uh, uh, with a glass of hot milk and she brought it directly from the first class and prabhupad was very happy to receive some service and uh, uh, 
Shrutakriti Prabhu explained, Shrutakriti Prabhu mentioned, Prabhupada, that's amazing, isn't it? And he is referring to that how Shri Prabhupada's Mahaprasadam right from the plate, somehow or the other, this person has eaten. And so um, all the disciples of Srila Prabhupada are so keen to get this nectar of Mahaprasad and they are all hankering that how they can get some Mahaprasad. And being the personal servant, Shruta Kirti Prabhu uh, gets used to get the opportunity to have that Mahaprasad many times. But still, they were always very eager. It was not that he was having, so he was just, yeah, I'm, I've been having for a long. So he would be really always eager to get the Mahaprasad from Srila Prabhupada. Like that. And then this used to be his favorite favorite pastime that he used to tell in the uh, whenever he used to get give lectures on Srila Prabhupada. So one day, after he explained this pastime um, in Brazil, he was explaining this, and someone came to and talked to him and he said, that, Do you want to actually hear one of the amazing Sankirtan stories, like the book distribution stories? And he said, Yes, please. So this person tells him, this devotee tells that I was actually distributing books in Brazil. And as part of that, we used to go in very remote places of Brazil. So once we were in this rainforest and we went there by four wheel drives, it was a very remote part. And in one of the villages, we did this Harinam Sankirtan. And after that, we began knocking on the door. We were going door to door and to distribute books. And I came across this house. I knocked on the door and a woman answered. And I tried to distribute the books to her. She looked at me. I was in Dhoti Kurta. And she said, please come in. And she was very pleased to see me. When I went in, I started seeing and I saw the pictures of Krishna everywhere. And she also had an altar with the deities in it. And I was very surprised. This person, this devotee is telling Shruti Kirti Prabhu. You are a devotee. And she said, yes, yes. It's so wonderful to see other devotees here, she's saying now. And he said, how did you become a devotee? And she said, well, the first time I met devotees was I met Prabhupada on an aeroplane. I was an air hostess. And she remembered that how she had some Mahaprasad or Maha Mahaprasad from Srila Prabhupada. So after that uh, encounter, uh, she was very, very attracted to this effulgent personality on the plane, which was Srila Prabhupada. And she didn't know anything about him. So she looked at the chart of the passengers' names and then she searched for who is he. And she found out that he has written lots of books. So she met some devotees, she purchased some books from them and she read those books. And from that, she uh, progressed without being in contact with any other devotees as such, just by eating the, the remnants of a pure devotee, she got transformed into a devotee. So this is the glory, glory of Maha Mahaprasad. So it's the uh, remnants of a pure devotee. In Srimad Bhagavatam as well, we see the story of Narad Muni. In his previous life, he was just a, a son of a maid servant. And in that life, as a small boy, he served some Bhakti Vedanta devotees and ate their Mahaprasad and heard from them. And with the potency of that Mahaprasad and the potency of the hearing that he uh, did from them and the service that he did for them, he became, at the end of his life, he became Narad Muni, one of the closest personal associate of the Lord himself. So please remember that we are receiving the food by the mercy of the Lord. The taste is coming from Him. The food is coming from Him. The taste of the prasadim is coming from Him. As well as the power to digest that prasad is also coming from Him. So hence, we should actually offer whatever we are eating to the Lord first. And we should cook for Him with love. And then we should offer. And we, we now know that He only accepts the food which is cooked with love and the food needs to be at least in mode of goodness. And you already know which food is in mode of goodness. So start offerings. So start cooking the food which is in mode of goodness. Start offering to the Lord. And as uh, we discussed, uh, start honoring the prasad 
by seeing this prayer of Sharir Abhidya Jal that I have already shared with you. And this will make your life perfect just by eating Mahaprasad. So Hare Krishna. So we'll stop here and we'll take any questions or comments. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Shila Prabhupad ki jai. Mahaprasad ki jai. jai. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Mataji. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, my question is that uh, the prasadam from Lord's plate or the prasadam that we cook or we distribute to devotees, does the prasadam from Lord's plate has got more potency because usually we get so excited to receive such prasad and even in Vrindavan I've seen Yes. People... Okay. Understood. So, is the prasad that we distribute to everyone is different from the prasad that comes from the Lord's plate? Is there a, a separate um, significance of that? Actually, what is happen? What happens is um, when the prasad comes, then we actually mix that with other prasad, and then that prasad gets distributed to everyone. In a way, uh, there is no difference. Because uh, the Lord's Prasad is transcendental. And uh, because it is transcendental, it is absolute. And there is no relativity in it. But still, there is some sentiment that we have that, oh, the Lord had just eaten. And then now that Prasad I'm going to get from his, uh, his, his plate itself directly. And that is how uh, the devotees are quite hankering for getting that Prasad before it gets mixed with uh, other prasadam uh, elsewhere. And that is why uh, the devotees are uh, running around and uh, trying to get the Mahaprasad directly from the Lord's plate if they can. But uh, okay. from the prasadam perspective, uh, all Mahaprasad has the same potency. Uh, it is just that we have to be ready for accepting that potency. If we are not ready, then uh, whether we take it directly from Lord's Mahaprasad, Lord's plate, or whether we take it from elsewhere, it will not work for us. Okay. Okay. Because scarcity. Is there anything further? You are muted by the post. Mataji? Uh, no, Parjani Prabhu was saying some adding to it. He was saying something to you. So probably what you okay. say, I understand that by saying like that by law of economics, because there's a scarcity, there's more demand. <laughs> 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 but there is no scarcity of uh, uh, Lord's Prashadam. Lord Lord's gives plate, plate thing. <laughs> plate thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from the plate. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Prabhu. Bharat Vajrashi Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Mother. In uh, Srila Prabhupada's story, how that only that uh, air hoster recognized the effulgence from Prabhupada, the remaining people, why did it, they didn't realize that an effulgence from Prabhupada? Yeah. So why did the other people not recognize uh, the purity of Srila Prabhupada? Um, as we actually see in Nectar of Devotion, it is explained that the, our attachment to or our attraction to the, to the process of bhakti comes from our previous life as well. So if we have done some devotional service in our past life, then in this life as well, that attraction will come. And originally this attraction comes from another pure devotee. So somewhere, somehow or the other, it is possible that this uh, air hostess would have done some sukruti in her past life as well. And because of that sukruti, she got attracted to Srila Prabhupada like that. So just like when Lord Shri, Shri Krishna came on this uh, planet, as well as Lord Ram came, so those who were actually keen to serve him and not envious of him, they recognized the Lord. And others like Duryodhan uh, in, the, in the Mahabharat pastime that we see, or in case of uh, uh, Ramayan pastime, we see that Ravana and Kumbhakarna and many others uh, demons were not able to recognize the Supreme Lord himself as well when he came. So what to speak of devotees, even when the Lord comes, some people are able to recognize him and some people are able to not recognize him. So it is there. So uh, it all depends on what is our consciousness. Are we 
envious of the supreme lord or are we willing to serve the supreme lord and in the beginning everyone may be little bit uh, uh, neutral or envious but those who has little faith at least some little faith in the beginning adho shraddha and with that little faith if they actually start associating with the right people right devotees then they will also understand the potency of the supreme lord and the potency of uh, lord's devotees so some or the other um, just like other people as well were not able to see the supreme uh, lord so when lord appeared or lord personally keeps on present. appearing personally present here similarly only few devotees uh, or few people could see the potency of shila prabhupada and effulgence and we see that everywhere that uh, when even when uh, shila prabhupada went to america at the first time that some uh, devotees uh, immediately became attracted and uh, uh, took up the process and uh, started following the instructions of shila prabhupada whereas for many years shila prabhupada was preaching in india before he went to us and uh, there were hardly anyone who got attracted at that point in time with, to him and then when he came back from america suddenly everyone uh, uh, took up this process so it is like that okay hari krishna so i will stop here then shila prabhupad ki jai, jai.